Amen. So we in part two this morning of freedom and inner healing. And our introduction scripture, foundation scripture rather, is coming from 1 Peter 2 and 24. Again, our foundation scripture is coming from 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. And we're reading from the King James Version. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. And ye means you. Amen. Amen. Now notice something here. Pay attention to words here. He didn't say you might be. He didn't say one of these old days you'll be. He didn't say, well, you know, in the Lord's own timing, you're going to be. What did he say? Were. You were. You were. You were. That's you. past tense. Yes. In other words, he has already done it. I love this passage. He tells us. Uh, how, by whose stripes, he said, by the stripes of Jesus. So we know when that happened, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's got to be you were, because that happened over 2,000 years ago, Apostle. Yeah. And so that's, that's right. what he's referring to right there. So it has to be were, has to be passion. But I think what happens is, and what, the reason why we like to, to stress this when we teach, is that so oftentimes, we reflect on salvation coming through the cross by way of the cross, which is great, wonderful, because that's what, you know, our salvation comes from. He was the substitute lamb for us. He paid, he swapped places with us. He took our place on, on that cross. And we know that salvation, that's how we receive salvation. Absolutely. But we, we sometimes neglect Sometimes we, we, we don't focus on what else came by the way of the cross, and that is our healing. Yes. By his stripes, and that's why First Peter 2.24 is uh, a very, very good example to print on your walls, in your home, in your bathroom, or on your in your automobile, on the refrigerator, wherever we frequent those places. By his stripes, we were healed. Who's, by whose stripes? Ye means you. And I like to personalize it by his stripes. I, and I call my name. I held an elder. I was healed. I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. And so That's that right. helps put it in, in perspective um, for us. And we begin to get, when we say it like that, we get faith for it, right? That's so right. It grows our faith. Amen. All right, Jeremiah. All right, Jeremiah 30 and 17. Jeremiah 30 and 17, coming from the King James, it says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy womb, said the Lord, because they have called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Now, pay attention to words again. But I will restore. Mm. What will he restore? I will restore health unto thee. Now. And heal thy wounds. The word restore. Okay. It was there before, but it is no longer there. So, restore means put it back. Huh. Come again. Return. Return. And this is what Jesus did. By whose stripes we were healed. Who his own self took. Our 
sickness in that with his heat. He bore it in his own body on that tree. That we being dead to what? Sins shall live. Look at that word live. Don't you want to live? Amen. Shall live unto what? Righteousness. By mm. whose stripes? By the stripes of Jesus. You and I are healed. Mm -hmm. But again, look at that word restore. Now here's what, Je here's what Jesus did. What's the origin of sickness and disease? What's the origin of all of these inner hurts? Wounded. What's the origin of that? Sin. Mm. When Mr. and Mrs. Adam sinned in the garden, this is where sickness and disease came in at. All right. It was not there before they sinned. It was not there. That's right. And that's why that word here in Jeremiah 30 and 17, restore healing to you, that thee is you, mm -hmm. is so important. Now, When Adam sinned in the garden, God sent his own son, Jesus, to restore That's healing right. and health and wholeness back to us. That's right. And guess what? He did. Amen. Yes, he did. He did. And then what did Jesus say? Before he died on the cross. Hmm. It is finished. Finish. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. It is finished. What is he talking about? Your health, your healing has been, he restored it back unto you. It, it's like this. Let me paint a picture here for you. You go to, uh, to the store, to the mall. And you use your card, you use your bank card, you purchase something. And then for whatever reason, you get it home and it don't look the same as it did in the store. Y'all know what I'm talking about, especially you okay. ladies. All right now. <laughs> yeah, y'all do it all the time. But <laughs> But anyway. You bring it back. And what do they do? That store takes the merchandise back and they put the money that it costs back on your bank card. In other words, they restore it back to you. Is that yeah. right? And that's right. Yeah. See, they put it back. What am I, what are we saying today? Jesus gave you back your healing. Jesus gave you back everything that the devil stole from you. Hmm. That's good. And this is why Jesus is called the second and the last Adam. Are you with me here? Yeah. He's called the what? The second and the last Adam. In other words, there ain't no more coming. Mm -hmm. Jesus is it. And he did it right the first time. They don't need another one. Jesus did it the first time right. You never need a backup plan with Jesus. He always mm -hmm. did it right the first time. And it always That's stays right. what he did. Glory That's to God. Right. Can you see That's that? Right. Yes. All right. Go go ahead. Okay, so let's continue with our notes. Uh, we got a topic coming up here, the emotional wounds. Let's talk about that for a minute. So in the past, a lot of attention was given. Uh, we brought this out last uh, Saturday as well. Let's go That's back correct. and look at this again. In the past, a lot of attention was given to expelling demons from people's lives. 
but in some cases, many persons were still bound. However, research has shown that deliverance is only a part of the process because emotional wounds are a factor as well, and it has not been considered. Praise God. Emotional wounds occur when people's feelings are hurt. We looked at that last week in, in some extent. Right. To some extent. Creating an offense that causes a wound on the inside. And these wounds are among the most common reasons why freedom achieved through deliverance is not always maintained or in, or is ineffective when it comes to dealing with demonic influences. So in the deliverance of ministry, it is necessary to learn that we learn about emotional wounds and, and we need to focus on how to you know, get people delivered from these inner hurts through the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Now, let me pause right there for a moment before we continue. These emotional wounds, I know there's some of you in this class today, you are dealing with emotional wounds. You are dealing with inner hurts. And they've been there for a long time. And you're going to find out as we continue here, it can cause sickness and disease. And this is the reason why in Mark chapter 11, in verse 24, Jesus says, what things soever you desire. When you pray, watch this word now, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. But he didn't stop there. Mm -mm. Now that's good right there. But he didn't stop there. You know why? He know people suffer from inner wounds. Emotional wounds. He know every scar is not on the outside of the body. Mm. He know that. And this is why he continues on in verse 25. Mark chapter 11 and verse 25. He said, when you stand praying. Yes. Yeah. Forgive. Did you hear that mm. word? Forgive yes. if you have art against any. Mm. So that your your heavenly father will forgive you of your slips, mm. your trespasses, your yes. faults, your sin. If you don't forgive other people, neither can the Lord forgive you. Okay. Now listen. Unforgiveness can make you physically sick. Stay with me here. Unforgiveness, if it's not gotten rid of, if you just let that thing linger on and linger on and linger on, it can destroy your life. There are many people sick today it's because they are holding unforgiveness. Okay. And un unforgiveness start dealing with your emotions. Mm. Unforgiveness causes you, watch this here, to repeat. Like It's like a tape recorder. Play it again. It plays okay. it again. Mm. That old sense that was done to you, it plays it again. You keep living the same thing over and over and over and over again. But Jesus said by his stripes, you were what? You were healed. 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 Now, yeah. he done did his part. Now, you and I, we have a part to play. What is our part? Mm -hmm. Believe that we receive and do what he said do. Forgive. Yeah. Turn it loose. Let it go. 
let it drop. Are you getting this today? Yes. Turn yes. it loose. Let it go. Let it drop. See, forgiveness is not for the other person, guys. It is for you. I want to repeat that. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. That person mm-hmm. going on with that, they done hurt you and they ain't thinking about you in most cases. Mm-hmm. They're going on with their life. But here you are. You can't move forward. You're sick. You're dropping pills day and night. You keep having, you know, you keep playing the, the tape over and over again. That video keeps playing. It's outdated, but it keeps playing. The devil keep reminding you how bad they did you. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's 40 years, and you're still dealing with that. Mm-hmm. It's time to get off that merry-go-round. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. It's time to turn it loose and let it go. What did mm-hmm. What did the word say? Jesus said, by his stripes, you were what? You were healed. Mm-hmm. Folks, that's outer healing and inner healing. But something you need to know. All healing starts on the inside. That's why the devil want to keep you bound. Mm. Remembering the past. That's Did you know Jesus died to set you free from the past? Mm. Oh. What do you yes, say, he did. Yeah, he did. I, and I think that's awesome, all um, that you were sharing. You know, it's like um this um research that was done many years ago um, about these people who were given uh placebos, some were given placebos and some were given uh the actual medication. But um hello? Yes. Oh, okay, I thought me. I thought I had lost you. Oh no. Uh okay. Um uh, I was just trying to recall it. Because it has a lot of uh, vital information as it relates to what what you're talking about. Uh, You say that we have to make sure that we deal with the inner hurts. Yes. Because those things that are not seen, it appear, it it shows up on the outside. For example, when someone speaks to you and someone says some uh, damaging uh, words to us, and, and hurtful words and, you know, spiteful words. The words, we can't see the words. We can't always see, but we can see the results. We can sense, we can see the results of it. And, and what you're talking about is forgiveness is for us. And that's what I was referring to a few minutes ago, uh, because they did a study that shows that, but I'm going to leave that alone right now until I can really show it, bring it up, and, and look at all the details. But when we are hurt by others and we do not forgive them, we think about the pain of it. We think about those words. We, re- we replay those words over and over again in our mind. And what happens is, and I think we looked at some of that on last Saturday, it it causes chemical reactions in our body. That's right. You know, things you hear uh, or, or see, it really can cause a chemical uh, response, something, some chemicals to be out of place, overreacting, underreacting, mis- being misguided by your thought life. Because when we begin to study the brain, we began to find out that it directs the traffic and the flow of everything that's going on in our body. Yes. And that's why we have to guard what we see and be careful what we look at, be careful what we hear, because it can affect us. It causes pain. It causes sickness. It causes disease, you know, to start happening. For example, and, and, and as I was pointing out, you know, you know, 
when you're driving down the highway and a, and you in a near miss accident, something, someone's coming so close, man, you just know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna hit you automatically. You can feel your heart and your and your your heart rate accelerating. You can feel the blood just rushing through your veins. You can almost hear some of us. You know, you can hear that blood rushing through your ears. See, your body's yeah. responding to what you see. And sometimes you sit, you grab your heart. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, that was too close for comfort. You, you see what I'm saying? And yes. sometimes, if, 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 sometimes these things can actually go into panic attacks and cause the body to respond. Well, that's the same way words can affect us and cause sickness to get lodged in the inner workings of our body. But we that's must right. release we must not hold on to those words. That's, that's right. why that's why we are taught to forgive. Because when you forgive, we let that go. You know, you also have people saying, I'll forgive you, but I will never forget what you did. Well, who are you hurting when you talk like that? Who are we hurting when we do that? When that's our behavior. God has said to us, we must forgive. And when we look at what forgiveness is, it means to what? Let it go. Not just, you know, verbalizing it. Not just words. Not just, you know, making a open display of it in your words, but then walking away with that pain still in your heart and thinking like, you know, I, you know, that was terrible what she did. That was terrible. I'm ne- thinking this to yourself. I'll never forgive her. Well, guess what? You're still holding that and you're giving that pain a place to what? Go into your own bloodstream and work against you. Yes. Sally, Sue, and Jane is going down the highway, kicking their heels up, probably forgot all about those terrible words they spoke to you. They are free, living their lives, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in everything that they put their hands on. And here we are still, what, in that fixation back there thinking about what they said to us. Do you see it? It's very unprofitable for us to hold on to unforgiveness. And when we can forgive, when we truly forgive, it it must be a hard thing. So you go on and you continue to walk in love so you can be free, so your body can function properly. And you find in many situations like that, when you really forgive, you forget. See, mm-hmm. that's what follows forgiveness. You forget. You forget it even happened. And now you're free to move on and live your life like if it never happened. That's right. Like if it never happened. Yes. So that, that's what I was getting out of what you were saying about we must forgive. It's for yes. us, isn't it? It's for us, isn't it? It's for our freedom. It's to keep us healthy. Not just phys- emotionally, but physically as well, because your emotions are tied to your physical well-being. Amen. Mm-hmm. So yeah. back, getting back to your notes, it says these emotional wounds are as real as wounds on the outside. Though many of us pretend and we like to hide them, we do, hoping that, you know, with the passing of time, they will just go away. But But many times they just get bigger and bigger because we begin to what? We continue, rather, to think about them, and it becomes a physical wound. And we know what happens to physical wounds. If not treated, they become infected, and they're seeping in the bloodstream and causing poison. And the same thing happens with emotional wounds. If not treated, the poison of the offense seeps into our, in our soul, into our mind, and our emotion, and our will, and it poisons us. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And because we can't see it, we tend to think, you know, it's not there, but it is. And, and, right. but it, but here's how it manifests. It manifests itself. And now all of a sudden we're angry all the time. We're distant. We're bitter. We're discouraged. We're, you know, irritated at the least little thing. And, and because this thing is still festering there, we haven't dealt with it properly. Listen, child mm-hmm. of God, you, you were not created by God to walk around angry and, and bitter and distance and, and always, you know, just <laughs> grumbling and you just 
striking out at every little thing, letting every any little thing hurt you. That's not the way you were created. You are a child of the most high God. Let's get that straight right now. And yes. I know you are because you wouldn't be on this line if you were not. That's you have right. accepted the spirit of God. You've accepted the life of God to come, the person of God to come and live inside of you. And that means you are no creation. But yes. what, what, but what we have to do is really begin to listen to those words, not just uh, ape and imitate them. Oh yeah, I'm a child of God, born again, you know, saved, sanctified, filled with the spirit of God, walking in, you know, mm-hmm. blessed on top and rising. That's just words. Mm-hmm. When we really get a good understanding of what it means to be born again, to be saved, and filled with the Spirit of God. Think about that, child of God. Just listen. You know, I heard Apostle say something, and I was so happy he said that because let me tell you, right now I'm in pure darkness. I'm in a room in my home, and I am in pure darkness. I can see nothing. I The only thing I can see is my computer in front of me. You know why I do that? I don't want to be distracted when I share the Word of God with you. Yeah. For this one hour, I don't want the TV, the doorbell. I don't want to see movement. I don't want anything. You know what I'm focused on? I'm focused on you. I'm focused That's on right. this word of God. I'm focused on making sure Praise that God. I'm a vessel unto God and I can hear him telling me what he wants me to say to you. And I hear him right now saying that we have a part to play. We must make sure that we are really truly understanding you see once we get an understanding of what salvation really is that means he's living in you so how can bitterness live in you if he's living in me how can Mm. resentment and unforgiveness just fester and fester and fester and grow and grow and grow how can that be how can oil you know oil and water the mix well guess what how can the spirit of God and the presence of cement, uh, satanic occult activities exist in you? Yeah, they do. I'm going to tell you why. Because we allow it, child of God. We allow these things to stay there and fester and grow. Remember when God gave us a, he gave us a free will. He said, I'll set before you light and death. And then he told us what to choose. He said, but choose life that you may what, Apostle? Live. That you may live and that you may have life what? More abundantly. More abundantly. And he said, now I'm going to tell you what to think. He said, think on these things. Why did he tell us what to think about? Because he knew that if we born again believers in Christ just continue to walk and see, he's letting you know. Your mind didn't get saved. Are you listening to me out there? That's good. Your spirit man got saved. So you're walking around with the spirit of God alive, waiting for your commands, waiting to be directed, waiting for you to give the word of God, give the the charge, give the command for the spirit of God to go and work on your behalf. But he's dormant. He's dormant. It's dormant in you because... We're constantly just moving about, you know, as if, yeah, you know, blase, uh uh-huh, yeah, I know, born again, uh uh-huh, yeah, I remember. No, child of God, you have the power, you have more power in your little finger than Satan has in his whole big old ugly rotten body. Yes, you do. But you're not using it. We have to get an understanding of who we are, whose we are, and where we are. According to Ephesians chapter 2, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right? That's where we are. And who do we belong to? We belong to him. And he be- and we're in him and he's in us. We got to really get into the darkness and get, get, close your eyes and reflect on that. And then you'll get a true revelation of the power. And then you'll start opening your mouth and say, I refuse to allow this unforgiveness to live in me anymore. Oh, no. Yeah. You get up and get out of here right now in the name of the Lord Jesus because in Mark 11, God said to me, 
that I can speak to the mountain and I can tell it to be removed and it must obey me. See, then we get a revelation of that. And so now okay. out you go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak to the mountain of unforgiveness and strife, separation and division. Out you go right now in Jesus' name. Now the spirit man that's on the inside of you, the spirit of God, is working in conjunction with your born again, recreated human spirit. And that's when you're going to see the convulsion. That's when you're going to see all these things begin to what dissipate and move. Yes. Because that spirit cannot stay in there if you're making commandments like that. That spirit, because yes, unforgiveness is a spirit, don't you know? And the spirit of a thing makes the man or the woman act like what it really is. If it's a spirit of unforgiveness, you're going to walk in unforgiveness. If it's a spirit of strife, you're going to walk in strife. If it's a spirit of anger, you're going to be angry all the time. If it's whatever that spirit is and they embody man, they make man what they are. You That's can right. look at a person and know what kind of spirit has taken a hold of that person because they're going to act like just what that spirit is. And what did Jesus call them? He said, come out of the man, you unclean Clean spirit. spirit. That's good. You unclean spirit, shut up and come out of that man. We know the story over there at the gathering, the maniac. Come on, don't you know that story? You've heard it time and time again. Mark chapter he was, five, yes. This man was out in the tombs day and night, cutting himself. Uh, and everybody was afraid of him because he was just running up and down, and tore all his clothes off. They had to put him in chains. But when he saw Jesus. Now listen carefully. The people think the the man spoke up and said, "Jesus, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God?" That wasn't the man. That was that spirit mm-hmm. that was inside that man, and that's why Jesus said, "Shut up and come out of him, you unclean spirit." And the spirit, and then Jesus said, "What is your name?" Yes. And the spirit spoke up and said, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he said, well, all of y'all come out of that man. (laughs) Yes, he did. You go and read the story for yourself. He said, and all of y'all come out. And they did. And and before they before they left that man, he said, well, let us go into the swine. And Jesus said, go. And they went into the swine and it was about 2000 herds. And they ran into the water and drowned themselves because of those spirits. Look at the power. Look at the power that was, 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 was inside that man, causing him to act like he was crazy. He wasn't crazy. He was possessed. Yes. And that's what those spirits try to do to us. Possess us. Well, let me tell you something, child of God. We have power. We have power that we haven't even tapped into yet. You have the power of God burning on the inside of you, just waiting for your very command. But you must mix it with faith. You can't approach God like, let me see if it's going to work. If you know the word of God and you have read that word all your life, you could be five or 55, 65, 75. If you have not mixed that word with faith, it has no power. That's right. When you speak it like you believe it, Watch those unclean spirits depart from you as well. Yes. Because you have the power to do that. And then those things cannot sit in your body and cause physical damage. That's what they try to do. Unclean spirits embody man and make man what they are. That's right. I don't want to keep going on and on with that. But Uh, guys, you got to know the connection. You must know the connection so you can walk in freedom, so you can know how to how to preserve. Not only, get, you see, God wants you to get free so you can help get others free. That's right. That's who you are. You are a yeah. born-again believer in Christ. God doesn't want to see you coming to visit him, coming home early. He doesn't want you to end your life early. He said, listen, in Psalms 91, I'll satisfy you with long life and I'll show you my salvation. Long life. 
In, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, what did he say? My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, but yet his days shall be 120 years. Come on, guys. And you must pray that. Thank you, Father, for 120 years clothed in my right mind and in good health. Yeah. And Praise you know he'll give it to you? He'll give it to you. That's right. That's oh, right. I'm, I better stop. Uh, because I can go at, on and on like that. Let's look at Numbers chapter 21, verse 7 through 9. It's in the notes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Numbers chapter 21, verse 7 through 9 says, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that we take away, that he, rather, take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. Set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, he shall live. Verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Yes. Now, here's why I want you to see this and understand this. You notice Moses here. What did they say? They sinned against the Lord, and they sinned against Moses. They were yeah. talking about him, yeah. not in a good way. Folks, yeah. your mouth can get you in a lot of trouble. People's mouths can get them in a lot of trouble with God talking about you. Now, what happened? Here's all that unforgiveness. <laughs> Probably Moses said something they didn't like, but Moses was God's representative. God was backing him up. Now listen. They got bitten by snakes. And I mind you pausing it, deadly snakes. So they're asking Moses to pray. They don't want to die. Here's what happened, as you saw in the scripture here. The Lord told Moses to do what? Take a brazen serpent of, of, of brass. Brass, folks, is symbolic for healing. I'll repeat that. Brass is symbolic for healing. So don't y'all go buy brass and, you know, get a whole board in it and put it around your neck. Okay? Look at what happened. He told him to take two serpents and put him, take a brazen serpent and put him on the pole. Folks, that serpent is a snake, right? Jesus, that, that serpent represented Jesus. It's Jesus on the cross. And that's why God told Moses to tell him if all those who would look up at this snake, which was Jesus, on the cross, they would what? They would live. Remember John 10.10? 10? The thief come to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came so you can have what? Life and have it more abundantly. I came so you can have life. You see, that's why he told them, tell them, if they look up at it, they would what? Live. That serpent, that brazen serpent on the pole represented Jesus. Glory be to God. Now, prophet, look at John chapter uh, 3 and verse 14. John 3 and 14 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must 
the Son of Man be lifted up. And the Son of Man is who? It's yes. Jesus. Yes, it is. The Son of Man is Jesus. Wasn't he lifted up on that cross? Yes. He's called the Son of what? The Son of Man. Because he came, God sent him to represent us in the earth. Showing you and I, if God did it for him, he can do it for us. This is the reason why Jesus took on our sin. What am I saying to you here today? What are we telling you? There are many of you with these inner hurts. Listen, I pastored a lady one time. This lady was married. Her husband cheated on her. And let me tell you, she had a lot of trouble with forgiveness. She said, I'll never forgive her. I just won't forgive her. I can't forgive her. That lady got unforgiveness in her heart to the point where she started getting migraine headaches. Every time she would get a migraine headache, it was because she was playing the tape back on what he did her. Now, I told you she cheated on, he cheated on her, right? Well, yes. let me just tell you all this. It was with that woman's sister. It was with his sister-in-law. And it went on for a while, even after the wife found out about it. Let me tell you all something. Then her sister and that husband, they, they got a divorce. The sister decided, I want to marry him. And they did get married. Told that family up, but they got married. Here's what I told that woman to do. I say, listen, you want to be set free? You want to really throw a real monkey wrench at the devil? You show the devil he's not going to control you not one more day? She said, yes, I love you. What do I need to do? I'm tired of this headache. I say, let's start the forgiveness process. Go to the wedding. What? I didn't say what. Go to the wedding. Me? Go to my ex-husband's wedding? He done cheated with my blood sister, and I'm supposed to go to their wedding? Well, you haven't hurt bad enough from the migraine headaches. And go to the wedding. Put a smile on your face. Buy him a gift. Go to the wedding. Well, she decided to listen to me. At the advice of her family telling her she shouldn't listen. Brothers and sisters, she listened. She went to the wedding and she bought them a nice gift. And let me tell y'all something. She hugged her sister at that wedding. And there the forgiveness came. Y'all ready for this here? That lady never had a, another migraine headache. She was totally set free. Why? She forgave. Do you see the power of forgiveness? She forgave. Now, I might add here, her sister and that ex-husband, they didn't make it six months. He did the same thing with some other person that he did with, you know, he did with the first wife. They didn't make it either. But what I'm trying to show you is that lady got total set free. See, those inner hurts left by the power of forgiveness. See, this is why we say Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Praise God. 
There are many of you under the sound of our voice today. You understand these emotional hurts. You want to be free? Forgive. Mark mm. chapter 11. Start at verse 22 and go on down to verse 26. Forgive. He said when you stand praying, you have ought against somebody? Forgive. Forgive. So that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your slips, your shortcomings, your trespasses. Mm -hmm. Folks, that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't do no wrong. Jesus didn't say, well, Lord, go ahead and let them die. We don't need them. No. For God so loved the world that he gave what the world needed. What the world needed. They needed Jesus. That's they right. needed his <clears throat> blood. They needed forgiveness. Jesus shed his blood, did he not? Well, there's life in the blood, folks. And mm. it has the power. That blood is still potent enough to make you free, make you whole today. You don't have to go one more day. In Acts 10 and 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, some virgins say Holy Spirit, same thing, and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He healed all who were oppressed of the devil. These wounds is an oppression of the devil. These inner hurts is an oppression of the devil. Listen, the Bible talks about in Ephesians, prophet chapter 1, in verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding may be what? Enlightened. Enlightened. Folks, listen, faith is of the heart. You believe in your heart. That's why doubt not, but shall believe in your heart. Mark eleven twenty three. That those things which you say shall come to pass. He said, You will have whatsoever you say it. So, again, faith is of the heart. Now listen. Mm. The eyes of your understanding need to be enlightened. Why? Because you mm. look, when you are born again, how many of you are born again? Amen. When you are born again, when Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, your That's heart right. have eyes. Well, not only your that. Your heart. Say it again. I say, but not only that, Apostle. There's a great point you're making right now, if I can come in for a minute. Come on. You know, and you are saying uh, we must understand all of this, be able to put it all in context. What's the bottom line of what we're talking about today? You see... Apostle said a few minutes ago, these people needed Jesus, right? Oh, yeah. But the great, the great news is this. We have him. Yes. We don't, we have, you have him. You listen to us out there. You have him. He's on the inside. See, you carry him around with you everywhere you go. There's a song out there. Take my Jesus along with me everywhere I go. Take my Jesus along with me everywhere I go. That's the truth. You have him. You're not waiting for him like these people were. Uh, it, there's this passage you have here in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 30. We didn't get to it. And great multitudes came unto him having, having with them those that were lame and blind and dumb and maimed and many others and cast them down at Jesus' feet. Do you know yeah. people should be casting folk down at your feet? That's right. And that's, and that's what we were talking about earlier when we said God wants you to get an understanding how to heal yourself so you can become what he needs you to be in the earth. You have Jesus on the end. You have the spirit of God living on the inside of you. That's and right. That's, that's the bottom line of what we're talking about today. But we that's must right. believe this and we must begin to act accordingly we must have what the word but then we must have what corresponding action action as as well 
You believe he, uh, the spirit of God is living on the inside of you? Then act accordingly. Behave in that way. You know, my father in the gospel, you know, he was in a situation one time and he said there was a big problem. I'm not going into all that because we don't have time for it. But the finale of the story he was saying is this. There was a problem. And all the pastors were meeting to find out what we're going to do, what we're going to do, what we're going to do. And they met day and night. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And when they asked him, he simply stood up and said, let's act like the Bible is true. Yes. Let's just act like the Bible is true. Child of God, I I just want to leave you with that today. Let's just act like the Bible is true. Praise God. Let's just act like the Spirit of God is really living on the inside of us. Let's just act like that. Let's act like it. And if he is living on the inside of you, then what should you be acting like? Yeah. Amen. Satan want an interest in you. He's trying to find a way to get in. Unforgiveness provides a door of safe passage Amen. for demonic spirits to enter into you and make uh-huh. their home there. We can cast them out, can't we, though? Huh? We Let's can act cast like the Bible is true. Out. Let's that act is. like the Bible is true. Let's cast that spirit of unforgiveness out. Let's open our mouth. And if we have been walking in unforgiveness, don't walk there anymore. Come on, let's act like the Bible is true. God said, you must forgive. He said that in Mark 11. And when you stand praying, forgive. Yep. If you have ought against anyone, he said, forgive. Now, that's not mm-hmm. Larry Elder. That's not Helen Elder. That is the word of God. Can we just act like the Bible is true this morning? Can we just say, guess what? Then I'm going to just do it. You're going to be just like the woman who forgave her sister. I don't know what it is been plaguing you all these years, but it's going to let you go. It's got you. That's right. Come on, let's do it. You can do it. You are born again. Man, woman, child of God, filled with the Spirit of God, washed by the blood, and having the Spirit of God on the inside of you, and you can do anything. Yes, you can. If you only believe. If you only believe. Glory to God. All right. Praise God. We trust that that bless you.